Hello guys, uh, I am Rathin, coming back to my channel, welcome, I welcome you all, lot to learn, lot to discuss, uh, this time we are discussing a numerical on compound cylinder and we have also already discussed the concept of compound cylinder, you can find the uh, video the, on the concept of compound cylinder on the i button or go directly to my channel, you can find it. So this is a compound tube having two tubes that is the external tube and the internal tube the external tube has as you can see 25 mm uh, internal diameter with 25 mm thickness and the internal tube has the external diameter of 250 mm with 25 mm thickness and the red if you can see the radial pressure at the junction is 8 newton per mm square and also the internal pressure of the entire compound tube is given as 60 Newton per mm square. This internal pressure has not to be confused with the, um, what should I say, with the internal pressure of the internal tube. This is the internal pressure of the comp entire compound tube. Okay, We have to find the distribution for the hoop stress at different radius. Okay, So coming to our topic, this has been given. Uh, the, the first one that is given as the internal diameter is uh, 250 mm okay 250 mm with the 25 mm thickness it becomes 300 okay how it has become 25 plus 250 plus 25 so this is for the external one and the external okay and the external will be called as D2 that is 300 mm this one okay and this will be shrunk fit into an another tube which will be called as internal tube okay this will be called as internal tube which external diameter is uh, external diameter is 20 uh, what should I say 250 mm okay and it has a thickness of how much it has a thickness of if you can see if you deduct to 25 and 25 it will it has a thickness of 200 no uh, internal diameter of 200 mm the internal tube has an external radius of 250 mm and and the internal radius of the internal tube is 200 mm whereas the external tube has an external diameter of 300 mm and the internal diameter of the external tube is 250 mm so if you see this the inside 250 of external diameter and the external 250 of the internal diameter is the common so this 250 will be the junction which will be designated as d3 equal to uh, what is our that is 250 mm and the inside diameter that is of the internal tube or the internal diameter of the internal tube is uh, d1 okay so d1 is equal to um, uh, 200 yeah 200 mm so respective uh, if we going to find out the radius will be r2 equal to 150 mm okay R3 is equal to 125 mm. Please mind that this D3 is nothing but your junction, junction radius or junction diameter you can say. This one, okay. And D1 will give you R1, which is nothing but 100 mm. Are you getting my point? So we need to find out and follow up for the procedure. So we have find out R1 as 100 mm, right? R3 as 125 mm and R2 as 150 mm. This R1 and R3 are the radius of the internal tube. Please mind that okay internal tube and r3 and r2 are the radius of the two radii of the external tube are you getting my point okay 
so first first of all we will do calculation for external tube so uh, when x equal to <coughs> r2 equal to x equal to r2 equal to 150 mm since we are discussing uh, the, to the topic of uh, external tube so we are, will be considered 150 mm and 125 mm 150 is the external right so there is no pressure outside so when your x is equal to 150 mm your px is equal to zero because there is no x fluid at the outside of the tube that is external tube again when your x is equal to r3 which is your junction radius this is 125 okay your junction pressure is given as 8 okay hope you remember the equation that is px is equal to uh, b1 by x square minus a1 and sigma x is equal to b1 by x square plus a1 so what we need to do we need to find out uh, the, uh, the constants a1 and b1 using these two uh, boundary conditions there are two constants right a1 and b1 and there can be uh, uh, two equations see 0 equal to b1 by 150 square minus a1 if we take this and again taking this 8 is equal to b1 125 square minus a1 so what we'll do there are two equations right this equation and this equation two equation and two unknown a1 and b1 if you solve this your a1 will come as 18.18 and b1 will come as 409090.90 okay if you if you have find out a1 and b1 you can directly put over here and you can find out two values again sigma 125 and sigma 150 are you getting my point because we are doing the part analysis for the uh, external tube not the internal tube and the external has the radius of 125 and 150 that's why we have taken 125 and 150 okay this is the pressure equation and this is the hoop stress equation if you remember from the concept video okay so coming back uh, to this thing uh, sigma if you put uh, sigma equal to uh, that is the formula is b1 by x square plus a1 so sigma 125 okay sigma 125 will be your b1 is 4090.90 by 125 square plus a1 is 18.18 will give you 44.36 Newton per mm square and your Sigma 150 okay will give you 1409090.90 by 150 square plus 18.1 it will give you uh, will give you how much let's calculate this is 36.36 Newton per mm square okay <clears throat> okay so these are for the external so the external part is completed okay external tube. let's do it for the the same thing for the internal tube okay if you take internal tube the two conditions are x equal to 125 when x is equal to 125 your px is equal to 8 newton because this 125 is a junction radius so the corresponding pressure is given in the quotient is 8 newton per mm square again x equal to 100 your internal pressure is not given this is zero so again using the equation a1 by x square minus b1 we can find out we can take uh, we can make uh, since uh, there are two unknown again we can make two equation out of this px expression so your a1 will come as minus 22.22 and your b1 will come as minus 22 
the L6 twos 0.22. So put getting uh, pu putting the a1 and b1 in the sigma x equation. Okay, sigma x equation. will give you sigma 125 and sigma uh, 100 okay the last time we did for 150 and 125 for the external for the internal we will do for the 125 and for the 100 so sigma 125 will give you minus 36.44 newton per mm square and if you calculate for the sigma 100 it will come as minus 44.44 newton per mm square okay so we have done calculation for the internal tube okay so uh, now what we should do since we have analyzed the internal part and external part now we will do for the entire compound tube and we will uh, see how the distribution goes okay okay just a minute okay So, for the entire tube, uh, your x will be how much? If you remember, your x will be the external radius is 150 when your P was equal to 0. External radius, at the external radius, the external pressure was 0. But when x is equal to 100, we are considering the entire compound tube. Please mind that. So, the inside uh, radius is uh, 100 right so it is when given as px is equal to 60 newton per mm square so again using the px expression that is b1 by x square minus a1 using this two in this px expression we can find out a1 as okay again we can find out a1 as um, this term it we can find out a1 as if we calculate it will be 48 and b1 as 1080000 okay so your sigma x will be how much b1 by x square plus a1 so using this a1 and b1 we will find out this time we will find out for the all the radius 100 sigma 125 and sigma 150 okay no matter we have used the two because these are these two are the di uh, boundary conditions but we can find the sigma for all the three radiuses sigma 100 sigma 125 and sigma 150 okay what what is happening uh, sigma 100 is equal to uh, if you put in this equation with a1 as 40 and b1 as 108000 so your sigma 100 will come as 156 mpa it will come as 117.12 mpa and it will come as 96 mpa this is for the entire tube if we do the analysis but we should see uh, due to the combi combined effect of shrinking the outer tube on the inner tube and the internal uh, fluid pressure, the final hoop stress will be somewhat the combination of entire compound tube plus uh, the part analysis for the internal for the first case, then again for the entire compound tube plus the external. We'll see, we'll see. Don't be confused continue the video you will know in the first case for the external if we see for the external what we have found out if you remember your sigma 125 and sigma 50 sigma 125 was how much 44.36 mpa and this was your uh, 36.36 mpa and for the internal if you remember you can always go pause the video and go back to the video if you want to uh, slow down down the video uh, for the internal we have found out six uh, sigma 125 and sigma 100 
uh, as minus 36.44 MPa and minus uh, 44.44 MPa okay and for the entire compound tube we have found out sigma 100 sigma 125 sigma 250 as how much 156 MPa just we have found out right 117 MPa and uh, final one is 96 MPa so we have to find out again for your external and for again for your internal because there will be combined effect means if we treat the external single handedly we, will, we can get sigma 125 and sigma 150 again if we single handedly handle the internal we will get sigma 125 sigma 100 then what happens if we uh, shrink fit into it then we get sigma 100 sigma 125 and sigma 250 okay so your external will actually become sigma 125 will become see if you see your sigma 125 is 44 here and again sigma this one say sigma 125 is 117 so if we add up 44 plus 36 okay uh, plus uh, 117 it will give you 161.48 MPa and sigma uh, 150 will give you see uh, if we see uh, it has sigma 150 right this one is sigma 150 sigma 150 was 96 uh, 96 MPa and sigma 150 is 36 MPa so we will add up this one and add up this one so it will be 36.36 plus 96 it will give you 132.36 MPa and for the, we have done the for the external and for the internal sigma again 125 again sigma 100 now we will consider we have, we have done with this part now we will do from this part okay this part so sigma 125 is how much minus 136 sorry minus 36.44 and again sigma 125 is how much if we take this is 117 so it will give you how much it will give you 80.68 MPa see again for this one sigma 100 this is minus 44.44 and sigma 100 is again is 156 what we are actually doing here it we are actually combining the effect okay First we have single handedly and analyze the external and internal then we have combined it. So minus 140 156 will give you around 11156 MP. Are you getting any point? If you do up until here your problem for the entire uh, compound cylinder will be done. I hope you have got the concept in case you have a problem you can stop the video pause the video and go back to the video or you can ask me in the comment section. And I again thank you all for supporting, liking and sharing my content. Keep coming, keep subscribing. Thank you, thank you so much. Like a bird on a tree.